lecture will be about uh, hacking the Selenium, <coughs> the Selenium web driver. There's going to be a lot of code involved. I'm going to do a quick intro uh, to Selenium and then uh, just uh, run over the, the entire or at least the main part of the Python implementation for Selenium. Basically, I'm, uh, I'm Daniel. I'm the R&D director of uh, AppliTools, a startup which does automated visual testing, which is basically how we got to Selenium in the first place. So the, uh, the agenda, an overview of uh, Selenium. Okay, so this is an example of, a, of running a Selenium script. Basically, what happens is that the browser opens up, we click on uh, a specific link, and then we uh, click on a button and enter uh, some text. Okay, so this is, this is automation. For those of you who haven't heard of Selenium or automation or what's, what's automation, this is it. That's the whole point of uh, Selenium. Selenium automates browsers, as you've seen, uh, on all major OSs. It also automates mobile devices or native applications or hybrid applications, mostly via Appium. It's basically a standard for web automation, open source under the Apache license. There's no IDE or a specific language that you need to use. The whole point is that it defines a REST API named the Wire Protocol, which we'll show in a minute. Each language has bindings for these uh, specific uh, for these specific APIs, and through that. Um, you automate either the browser or the mobile. This is what the Selenium architecture looks like. Uh, you have your code uh, on the left, and through the wire protocol, you uh, talk to a web driver server, um, which is uh, created by each of the uh, vendors for the browsers. Mozilla creates the Firefox driver, uh, Chromium project creates the Chrome driver, etc. And that driver server knows how to uh, directly talk to the browser. Now, hacking the Selenium web driver, we basically don't care about the entire right part. We only care about the left part. And the left part is uh, the bindings and uh, the protocol. All right, so uh, the wire protocol, as I mentioned, it's a RESTful uh, web service. Uh, you can see it on GitHub, it's open source. Uh, I think it's already a W3C standard, but I'm not sure. All right, so this was the very, very short interview of Selenium. Um, the only thing that's important for me to also emphasize is this. Uh, you would, if you're not familiar with Selenium or WebDriver, you would sometimes hear stuff like Selenium IDE is Selenium or Selenium is WebDriver, etc. Basically, it's kind of an historical mess. Selenium was an, uh, the original project created by Jason Huggins somewhere, I think, in 2005 or so. And the second version, which was created by uh, Simon Stewart, uh, is the web driver. And they kind of uh, unified both versions, and now it's called the Selenium web driver. So in case you hear, Selenium IDE is not Selenium. Selenium IDE specifically is a plugin for Firefox for record playback. It's nice, it has advantages and disadvantages, but it's not Selenium. When we're talking about WebDriver, we're mostly talking about either the wire protocol or the bindings or the WebDriver server. So uh, in order to hack uh, the Python bindings for the Selenium WebDriver, we'll use a benchmark script. Basically, open up the browser, go to the PyCon website, find the element for the sign-up link for the waiting list, this is a bit more complicated, but the idea is that if we try to click on an element which is not in the viewport, you would get an error. So I'm basically scrolling to that element, and then I click it. And after that, we'll find the waiting list, the join waiting list button, and we'll, we'll click it, and then enter the name Selenium WebDriver. You can see here a few interesting properties of the Selenium uh, interface. For example, once I found an element, I can ask for a location. Okay, in the first line. For example, or I can execute a JavaScript code, that's the third line. And in the end, we'll close the browser. So what our SDK is gonna do, we're gonna track uh, actions, which is click or send keys. There are more actions you can track. We'll do that because we wanna be uh, very quick. Um, we're gonna track navigations, specifically get. And we're gonna export uh, the results. This is what the, our Python script looks like and the web driver Generally speaking, in Selenium and WebDriver bindings, WebDriver is the class you want to work with. It's the class that has all 
the actions or find element or whatever. So we're going to take a look at that. It's webdriver.firefox, which creates some kind of an instance. You want to find out what that is. We look at the code. We get that it's a package. All right, so a package. Then what's Firefox if uh, WebDriver is a package? So we take a look at init.py in, uh, for the WebDriver package, and we see that actually it imports uh, a module, uh, a class from a module inside from a sub package named Firefox. Uh, and it aliases that as Firefox. And the model that it imports is called WebDriver. This is the entire code. Uh, I deleted some lines, but basically this is the entire code of the uh, WebDriver model inside Firefox, which basically tells us that this is a thin wrapper. So the entire code for the uh, WebDriver is somewhere else, and in this case in the remote WebDriver which we now have to find out what that is. Looking again at the init.py of WebDriver, we see that almost all other uh, browser drivers are imported in a similar manner. So what we can assume, and this is indeed the case, that all other uh, browsers, all other Chrome driver and Edge driver, etc., are also thin wrappers for the remote web driver. And the fact that we have a specific import for remote probably means that we can use that directly. We're not going to do that here, but uh, you can. So this is our um, schema so far. We have a Selenium package containing a WebDriver package, and that contains a Firefox, Chrome, blah, blah, blah packages, and also a remote package, which includes the remote WebDriver. And the WebDriver for Firefox, Chrome, etc., all inherit from that uh, class. So moving on to the remote web driver. This is part of the code. As you can see, this is the web driver implementation for Python. So we're in the right place. And it basically tells you what it, what it does. It actually sends commands to the web driver server. And that's the way it handles the browser, which we already knew. This is a snapshot of how the uh, actual code of the web driver, the remote web driver, looks like. And what you can see is that there's an initialization code, a bunch of uh, commands. Navigation commands like uh, get, backward, forward, etc., and a lot of find element type of commands, and also a bunch of properties. What we're interested in is the navigation commands, find element, and the properties. I'll explain that in a minute. We look at the uh, we look at the implementation, and what you see basically is that all these navigation commands are just uh, another call to self-execute which is um, saying, OK, I'm sending the server a command, and that's it. There's, no, there's not even a return. So they're very thin. We don't need to do a lot for, uh, in order to wrap these uh, functions. We look at self-execute just to make sure. And as expected, the first part is get the session ID uh, for this automation session, get the values and parameters, and send them to the executor, and then get the response. Second, uh, second type of commands, the find element uh, variants, which we're interested in because we uh, want to track element events. These commands also, they look very thin. Basically, they all call some kind of a, either a find element or find elements function. Um, so we look at the find element function, and it, again, calls execute with the type of how exactly do you find an element, whether it's ID or CSS selector, etc. We don't really care about that. What we want to do is we want to wrap the element, so once you get a click on the element or send keys on the element or whatever, we can record that. And this is the get the find elements, which returns a list of elements, not a single one which means we'll have to uh, wrap each element separately. So what is element? We go over to the web element.py. OK, it has a click method, which we're interested in. The thing to note is that it also has a find element type of methods. Um, so this means you can find an element from within an element. So we'll have to uh, track that as well um, if we want to uh, track uh, actions on these specific elements. And it also has properties. So again, what we're interested in, commands, find element, and properties. Now, why specifically the properties? I don't know if you ever uh, encountered this message in a thread. If you ever done meta programming of some kind, you probably did. This is basically Guido <coughs> acknowledging that it's the right thing to do to uh, call um, get attribute from the uh, method has attribute, which means that if you have a property, it is activated. 
And if that property, like in our case, have a side effect, this means that you're going to activate something if you're going through the uh, methods uh, or actually the attributes of a specific instance. So we'll have to handle that uh, part specifically. All right, so we have enough info. Now we're actually going to write our uh, code. So first model, a little bit, a little bit of metaprogramming, code that which creates an interface identical to the one that we currently have. The reason is we want to wrap web driver, we want to wrap web element. We don't want to manually write all these functions. We'll just iterate over them and create our own interface on our own object. And specifically, we're dirty handling uh, properties. We're not doing property detection because we're hacking on the Selenium web driver. We just manually write the properties name. There's not many of them. Create forwarded method. It's another implementation detail. And create proxy property. Once we know something is a property, we can proxy it from one object to another. Web driver recorder. This is our recording web element. This is our wrapper for the web element. The main idea is that it has an initialization part which, uh, receives a web, which receives a web element as a parameter, as well as a recorder object, which we'll define later, and a driver. And what it basically does, it creates the proxy interface that we discussed uh, previously. Uh, it also implements find element and find elements. So if you call find element from within an element, we'll wrap those as well, as well as send keys and click. Now, the interesting part in click and send keys is that uh, once we get this call, we record uh, the <coughs> we record the location, uh, or actually we let the recorder know that a click has happened or a send keys has happened. Recording a web driver, same same, only for a web driver object. You can see at the top we have the list of all the properties name. This is the dirty handling of properties which I talked about. The rest of the implementation very similar to web element. And the last part is the recorder. The interesting part is uh, the on events part. Every time we get an event, uh, we get, we take the element, we uh, take its location, and we add it to a list of uh, events for that specific page. This is basically the code, and we can see the recorder. Okay, so this. Basically, the run of the recorder. What I'll show you is it's the same script as we've done before, uh, except that it uses the SDK that we've created. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. Once it finishes, it exports all the locations, all the events that we've uh, captured. And we'll look at a JSON formatter uh, for that. And you can see that we have a click event for the PyCon org uh, page. We then have another click event and eventually the send keys. This is how we basically use the uh, SDK. We have the recorder.start, it gets a web driver, and it returns uh, the wrapped web driver. From that point on, we just uh, move forward with the driver as if it was a standard web driver. Just in case you were wondering how, use how actually useful is that, well, I have a real use case with the same uh, on the same scenario. This is the Applitools Eyes Editor. It uses a code very similar to what I've shown you, but it's very useful. It, it obviously handles a lot of other different use cases. For example, if you're using frames or if there's scaling in the image or whatever, then you need to track locations. You need to uh, do a, a little bit more of a complex logic to handle locations. Uh, and events, um, but basically the main idea is the same. The question was, I think, how did I um, format the JSON that I uh, eventually received? It's an online website. You just search for JSON formatter and it shows that. I don't think it produces an XML, but the question was uh, basically what was the, um, uh, the video that I showed that um, showed the clicks and texts how did it work with the JSON that I exported? So the video was from our application, from the Apply Tools application. It doesn't work with JSON. I mean, there's a REST API which works with JSON, but basically we provide an SDK. So once you use that, um, it automatically captures the events. OK, so this is what I did just to show you that. Once you use the uh, SDK that we wrote here, then it's automatically capturing events. That was the, the main idea of that talk. Basically, you can automate with Selenium 
everything that has a Selenium server. If, if whatever it is you're talking about is from the Chromium project, then you can probably automate that uh, using Chromium server. Thanks. Thanks.